Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in this new topsy-turvy world you are watching. My name is Jeff Hudson, and I'll be your instructor. Here is the Excel file we'll be using. Study it for a moment. Again, press the space bar to re-pause and click play when you're ready to resume. One or two things you might like to notice are that the dates are long dates. We're going to change those to short dates. And the extended price in column K does not show dollar signs. Firstly, notice that here in the Home tab, we have a group called Number where there is a drop arrow. And when I click that drop arrow, I'm shown the various format types that can be in the columns. Our job is to check that the format type in all of the columns is correct. The reason that we need to do that is that any pivot tables that we create based on a file needs to have the correct data types so that the pivot tables appear correctly. Firstly, we're going to check the columns that contain text are actually formatted for text. The easiest way to do that is to click on the column heading, hold down the control key, and click on the other columns that contain text. Then all we need to do is to go to the general tab and click text. Next, we can check for numbers. So we'll click on a column that contains numbers, hold down the control key, and click on other columns that contain numbers. You'll notice that I've not selected the extended price column K because we're going to format that shortly uh, as an accounting type with a dollar sign. However, with the number columns, we're going to click drop arrow, go to number and here I see that the number type includes two decimal points. I don't want those so I'm going to right click on one of the columns while they're selected, format cells and say to Excel I don't want any decimal points in those three columns. When we click OK the decimal points disappear. Now let's do the extended price while we're here and we're going to format that as an accounting format which puts a dollar sign to the left of the cell and shows me two decimal points for the cents. So far so good. Now just we need to do the, the dates and again I'm going to select the columns with the dates and simply click in the drop arrow and say short date and that gives me short dates. Notice while we're here that the columns are too wide for the data. So I'm going to invoke a procedure called best fit. And what I do, having selected the columns, I simply point my mouse at one of the divider lines between the column headings. And when I see the double headed arrow, I double click. That gives me best fit. Now, the last thing we need to do in the formatting is to change the width of the uh, column containing the product name. And I do that by pointing at the divider line between the columns and double clicking when I see the double headed arrow. I could drag, but it's quicker to double click. And there, that gives me the best fit for the product names. Now we can click away to deselect and there is our freshly formatted, at this stage, spreadsheet. Our next task is to separate in the salesperson's column the first name and the last name of the salespeople. To do that, I need to create a blank column to the right of the salesperson column, which is somewhere for the last names to live. I do that by right clicking on column D and choosing insert and that inserts a column to the left of the selected column. 
Now what I need to do is to click on the salesperson's column because I want to tell Excel to do something with those names. And in the data tab, in the data tools group, there is a command text to columns, which I'll click. And it says, I notice that the file type that best describes your data is delimited. Yes, next. It's delimited by what? By a space. Not a tab, but a space. And there is a data preview. So I'll now click next. Text. Finish. And it says there's already data here. What is the data in that column? It's the column heading. So I can click OK. Because what I can now do is to rename those columns. First name and last name. And there we go. Whoops, last name. My spelling is not all that quickly. And I'll press Enter. That completes that particular task. Notice that there are no sort and filter buttons in the column labels. This is really quite simple. All we need to do is click somewhere in the spreadsheet and then go to the Data tab and choose the Filter button here in the Sort and Filter group. When I click that, there I see the Sort and Filter arrows in each of the columns. It's now time to consider making our spreadsheet look that little bit prettier or more professionally acceptable. The first thing I'm going to do is to create banded rows and I do that by clicking somewhere in the spreadsheet and going to table design and I put a tick in banded rows and what that does it gives me the choice of alternate colors in each of the rows and I can point my mouse at various styles until I find one that I like. Our final task in formatting is to put a colour behind the header labels up here. And what I'm going to do is to drag through the labels and I'm going to go to the Home tab and choose the drop arrow next to the Fill Colour button and choose a colour. I'll choose this grey here. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do while I'm here is to choose the center align button in the alignment group to center the headings in the columns. And when I do that I see that is exactly what occurs. And the very last thing I'm going to do is to change the extended price to sales price. And there, when I press enter, we have completed our formatting. And I think you'll agree that you've made quite a change to the appearance of the spreadsheet. The data in the columns is correct in terms of any pivot tables that we may care to construct from this particular spreadsheet. And I can only say, well done.